What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Guys, so in recent, we've done several videos of cars that have been found sitting for a long time. And uh, we're not talking like a year or so, we're talking 10, 10 years plus. Um, but as you well know, cars sitting for any length of time, it's not really good for them. And we've gotten several emails and several questions like, you know, I just found a car that's been sitting a while. What do I do? So in this video, what we're going to do, if you've had a car sitting for a long time um, or just hasn't been driven in a long time, we're going to go over some of the stuff you need to do to get the car back running and what you can expect and some good preventative measures that you can take to, you know, get that thing back percolating on the road. All right, guys. So as uh as I said, we're using Corey's uh, 85 GT as our specimen, and this car sat for a good 20 years. First thing, pretty much, gas tank. Yeah. Fuel's bad, so tank yeah. was rusty. Had to put a tank in it. He had the carburetor redone. So, so basically, the gas tank, any if it's sitting for a long period of time, there's a good chance that it's got rust inside of it. Um, and or it's, you know, the gas has turned to sludge, like in the case with, you know, yes. another car we saw. It don't take long either. So that's one of the things, you know, it, and that's, I'll say worst case scenario, but there's a very good chance your tank's going to be like that. So the very first thing is, you know, drop the tank. You're probably going to have to put a fuel pump in it as well, um, you know, because they'll sit there and gum up and, and freeze up. And so that is numero uno. Okay, so... We'll talk carburetor first because, you know, obviously this car is carburetor. Um, so, Corey just took this off and sent it off and had the carburetor totally rebuilt. And basically, you're not getting around that. The needles are going to stick. The floats are going to stick. Um, you know, carburetor that's been sitting that long is just not going to function. So, uh, now if we're talking fuel injector, you know, fuel injected then probably one of the best things you can do is take your injectors out and send them to you know like that machine you've got the yeah, you can check them, yeah. cleans and flows them um, injectors are a little less prone to you know getting gummed up like a carburetor but still they'll stick sometimes and yeah work. and if they stick Especially if they've been sitting a long time they'll stick yeah i mean you, and at that point you know if it sticks open then you know you got a good chance of washing down the cylinders, hydro locking the engine. If it sticks closed, then you got a misfire and a down cylinder. So um, carbureted, pull your carburetor, send it off, have it rebuilt or clean, or do it yourself if you're mechanically inclined. Injectors, take them off, and uh, a lot of shops, probably in your area, mechanic shops will have a machine that will clean and flow injectors. Oh, now the next thing that we need to look at brakes so we didn't actually film but uh when we took the master cylinder lid off it had all kinds of corrosion in it inside and outside yeah it was it's probably gonna wind up needing one yeah good good chance it's, it's probably fine. probably gonna need it because brake fluid does corrode too all that metal does corrode too another thing your rubber lines up front your uh wheel cylinders in the back you're probably going to blow those at some point. You might get lucky, but um, at this point, this one does have brakes, but they're pretty spongy is what we, what you're saying. So, yeah, it's, and we, ha we haven't really drove the car, so be prepared. Uh, brake lines, wheel cylinders, possibly master cylinder, booster. Um, good possibility you're going to run into some leaks there and some failures. So just be aware. All right, so next up probably a good idea if nothing else check check all your plugs um rotor cap wires all of that mm -hmm. it's not a yeah it's not a bad idea to replace that but as far as your ignition system um that's not uh i mean that just means you know it's done anyway if you want to go ahead and give it a full tune up but uh yeah so there's your ignition all right so next up and we're gonna need a uh you got your flashlight on you your cooling system. Yeah, you always got your flashlight on you. So, take a look right in there. Hopefully the camera will pick that up. Yeah. Yeah, right in there. So, for all that time, that coolant was sitting in there. Yeah. 
trying to get that. Okay, so cooling system. Hoses uh, have been sitting there for a long time. Radiator been sitting there for a long time. If nothing else, maybe just drain everything out, put fresh cooling in it, and you know, kind of go. Start for leaks. Yeah, start looking. <laughs> start looking for leaks. Probably the radiator is going to be the the first thing to go, but it, it could be one of your heater this hoses. It's got that old school clamp on it. It sure is. Yeah, that's another good way to tell if uh, you probably need to go ahead and put hoses on it anyway. Those are the factory clamps you see down here. Someone's already, let me shine it down there. Someone's replaced that heater hose down there. You can see it's got the different style clamp. That's from a part store. Oh, it's even got the sticker on it. Um, but your two heater hoses right here, and then your two heater hoses back here for the uh, heater core. Um, probably a good idea to go ahead and replace those, and then your upper or lower radiator. Keep an eye These on them. old now. Yes, very, very old. And especially when they've been sitting there and had time to yeah, sit yeah. there and corrode as that radiator has been. You can see the sticker on that. That radiator has been replaced at some point, um, but it's already clogged up again. So, all right, so let's, uh, let's get a little deeper in here. So as far as your engine, let's say you don't know anything about the engine whatsoever. Probably the best thing you can do, uh, pull a plug out, Drop a little bit of oil into each cylinder through the spark plug hole. At, uh, get some oil down in the cylinder. And then at that point, turn the engine over by hand. Just make sure you know it's not stuck, it's not froze up, anything like that. Um, probably the best thing to do before you decide to just go ahead and, and hook the battery up and fire the thing up. Get some lubrication down into the cylinders because they're going to be dry. And you can, you know... Tear your rings up, score the cylinder wall, something like that, if you dry start it. All right, so as far as your transmission, uh, definitely check whether you got a manual or automatic. Make sure um, they are full and uh, your differential as well, because you never know. Check, if, make sure your fluid levels are good. Uh, again, as cars sit, the seals and stuff will tend to dry up and get hard and brittle, and that'll cause leaks just from sitting. So if something got, you know, kind of dry and brittle, started leaking, you may not know the differential or, and or the transmission don't have any fluid in it. Make sure, get that thing up in the air, check your fluid levels, top them off as needed uh, before you go anywhere, before, you know, before you attempt to drive the car. All right, guys, so we were just standing here talking. A great point that uh, we definitely need to bring up is there's a huge difference in a car that has been stored inside and a car that's been stored maybe under a lean-to or or worse, just out in the open. Um, a car that's been stored outdoors is the very, very good chance it's going to be filled up with rodents and all kinds of stuff. Um, which you think, oh, well, you just clean it out. No, they chew on wires. So, um, yeah, that's definitely a... If, if you're if you're looking at picking up a car that's been sitting a long time in the outside just be prepared that you're gonna have to go very very deep um inside the dash under the under interior panels under the carpeting and because they do get in there and they do chew on wires and and mess with stuff it's going to give you all kinds of crazy electrical gremlins and stuff like that a, big old nest and a, a, a very big nest yeah and we had, we actually, uh, when we took Boomer's car apart, we found a nest underneath the back seat with actual live baby mice. So just be prepared for that stuff, guys. Any crevice they can get into, they're going to get into, and it's going to cause all kinds of issues. Doors. These tires are probably 22, 23 years old. If the car had been sitting outside, they, they wouldn't even hold air. These do hold air, but dry rot makes them basically worthless i mean they're they're essentially i don't think these tires have any miles on them but from sitting so long you're going to deal with flat spots dry rotting it the car's going to ride bad it's it's you know you're going to need to go ahead and put tires on the car so just go ahead and add that to the list all right so we're about to get the car out and uh, take it down the road for a little drive there's several things we need to talk about on the drive um, that you're going to need to keep in mind but few other little things if your car still has a smog pump and it's hooked up you can see good chance it's going to be uh frozen now that's that's going to be a very very stock car that the belt's actually still on it um 
definitely check for that. Obviously, you're going to need to look at all your battery connections. Uh, this was new until we tried to jump it off the main time. So you're going to need to check that. Um, starter solenoid, sometimes those will just go bad um, from lack of use. So there's a very good possibility of that. Alternator, same thing, sits for a long time. Um, good possibility it died while the car was sitting. So um, charging system, obviously you're going to need a new battery. Good chance you're going to need a uh, starter solenoid all of that so again add that to your list all right guys so all of the stuff we've discussed in this video we've done so at this point i'm gonna take the car out on the road and just kind of see how it does and then we'll talk about some other things that you're going to run into so let's get this thing out take it down the road see how it does since 2001 didn't go off too bad you see it's actually idling pretty decent the smoke seemed to clear it up or it has cleared up but it's not horrible so guys here's a couple other things that you're going to run into as you start getting the uh taking the car down the road getting the seals and all the fluids up to temperature is you're probably going to develop some more leaks again uh cooling system leaks oil leaks um front and rear main seal pan gaskets all of that um, axle seals, pinion seals, uh, tail shaft seal at the transmission, all of those seals that have been sitting there dry for all that time and gotten brittle, now they're, you know, they're not going to hold fluid anymore. So be prepared for that as you start driving the car. Um, with these older ones, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and repack the front bearings, uh, put some fresh grease in there, and um, just as you run into issues, just deal with them as they hit you all right guys so that is pretty much gonna wrap that one up i hope that helps like i said more and more people are finding these old cars that have been put away and, and stored forever um you know this is gonna give you a good idea of what you're looking at there's gonna be quite a bit of money involved it doesn't matter if the car has 10 miles on it um, you're still gonna have these issues so whether it's got 100 miles 100,000 miles or 10 miles on it everything that we've talked about in this video you're going to have to address and that's just from age that's just from sitting so i hope that helps you you know get an idea of what you're going to spend the amount of work involved to get something that's been sitting a long time back on the road um 
hey, it's fun, you know? Bring something back to life, clean it up, go enjoy it, flip it, whatever you want to do. Um, that's what cars are about. So if you got some value out of this video and you enjoyed it, big thumbs up. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. We'll catch you on the next one.